All right, so today we're going to talk about how a bill becomes a law. And in order to do that, we are going to watch Schoolhouse Rock together. So I always show this in class, so I figured why do it any differently here online. So we're going to watch Schoolhouse Rock on just a bill together. So let's stop there for a minute. If you go to the flowchart that I sent you guys, uh, so this is what we're talking about right here. Bill's introduced. A bill is nothing more than just an idea, like they say in the video. A bill's an idea that comes usually from constituents about an issue that they want resolved, corrected, a law they want put in place, a regulation that they see. So the example in the video is they want, you know, uh, buses to stop at, at railroad tracks, et cetera, right? So that's what they're proposing. And it starts here with an introduction. Once a bill is introduced, you can see on either side, the House or the Senate, it goes to what's called committee. And that's what we're gonna talk about next in the video. All right, so let's stop there. So Bill brings up a couple things here in the video. Uh, this is where we're at now. Bill's referred to House committee and subcommittee. Uh, committee marks up the bill with changes. So when you're in committee, you've got members of both parties there, right? So let's say it's a committee on uh, agriculture. Uh, they want new legislation uh, as far as regulations and guidelines for farmers when it comes to agriculture, right? And that's what the bill is proposing. So you're going to have Democrats and Republicans, both with different viewpoints, both with different interests, arguing over what should and shouldn't be in the bill. Uh, if the bill gets through committee and subcommittee, subcommittee would just be experts in certain aspects of that bill, then it's going to go to the floor and get voted on. As Bill said in the video, most bills will die right here. They don't get out of committee. Sometimes a bill gets what's called pigeonholed, uh, which means that the bill just stays there on committee and they never do anything with it. They don't discuss it. No subcommittees are assigned or anything like that. It just dies. So the, when Bill's talking about a bill dying, that's what happens. Uh, committees are so overwhelmed with ideas or bills that they tend to only focus on the ones that they know they can get past or the ones that they are most passionate about. Most bills wind up at committee and never get discussed again. So let's see what happens from here.
All right, so let's look at two different things here. Uh, two different things get mentioned. Once a bill gets passed here, once a bill gets passed here, it's voted on on the floor, uh, the House reading and debate uh, are added, and then the House has a full vote, then it goes all the way over to the Senate, and it does the same thing over and over again. So the Senate mocks up their own version of the bill just like the House did. So let's look at our agriculture bill that we just talked about. So I'm passing a bill on agriculture and regulations and guidelines that farmers have to follow. I've passed it through the House. Now the Senate does the same thing. They're going to assign committees and subcommittees. They're going to mark it up. They're going to come up with their own ideas and provisions they want in it. And then they will vote upon it too. Now the one thing that's different with the Senate is the Senate has this filibuster power. Filibuster is talking a bill to death. Now I've attached another video to uh, the topics page on filibusters. I'd like you to watch that one too. It, it explains what a filibuster is, but that's when a senator can basically stand up and talk endlessly for hours. I mean, the, the record is over 24 hours. Talk endlessly to avo avoid a vote being taken on a bill. Because to pass a standard bill, it requires 51 votes, a simple majority of the Senate. To end a filibuster requires a 60 person vote. So if a bill is very narrow as far as how how much it will pass, if they don't think it'll reach 60 votes to pass it, filibusters have been used in the past to kill a bill. And it's it's talking the bill to death, exactly what he said. Now, let's say a bill passed, our, our agriculture bill passed the filibuster, nothing bad happened, and the Senate voted for its approval. The next stop is now the White House. The president holds the power to veto. He can cancel a bill out just like that. After going through the House and going through the Senate and getting approved, the president can still cancel it out with a veto. Such a happy ending. All right. Um, so I hope that was fun. I hope that was somewhat memorable. I'm sure you've seen that video elsewhere in elementary school. Uh, so yes, the president has the veto power where he can cancel a bill out. If that happens, both the House and the Senate would then have to vote two thirds in both the House and the Senate to overrule a veto. Now that's been done in the past, but it does not happen very often. In most cases, if a president were to veto a bill, the bill just just dies or they, they start back over from the beginning, writing it slightly different. Uh, I hope this helped explain how a bill becomes a law. Important things to remember, this is where most bills die, subcommittee, committee level. Uh, what happens in the House also has to happen in the Senate. So it's a two-step process. You go through the process twice and then focus on the filibuster power, which is down here, of the Senate. Watch that video. It helps explain it. And we'll pick up from there next time we get together. Uh, I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Uh, take care. Get a hold of me if you have any questions. All right.